Hi, I'm Chris Andrews with the Best Targets Shooting Team, and we're here at the Ashbury Precision Ordnance Booth SHOT Show 2018. And the Precision Rifle Network has asked us uh, to talk a little bit about the Mammoth Sniper Challenge and what's important to be competitive there. Uh, the Mammoth Sniper Challenge, a uh, three-day shooting event uh, in three divisions, can include some hiking and rucking and can include some overnight camping. Uh, but I want to tell you today about uh, five key points to shooting the stages at the Mammoth Sniper Challenge. Uh, the first point uh, about shooting at Mammoth is knowing your gear and what it can do. Um, people can shoot club events, PRS events, uh, prone events, and think that they know how their gear works. But when you get out in the rain, in the 20 degree weather, and you're trying to write notes on a piece of paper with a pencil that's wet, uh, and your optic is fogged up, you learn what your gear can and can't do. So before you go to Mammoth, you need to practice in all kinds of conditions and be ready for anything that could come up. Uh, the second thing that's important at the Mammoth Sniper Challenge is stage briefs and understanding stage briefs. How long the stage is, where the targets are, what the primary targets are, what the secondary targets are, point values of targets, orders of operations for movements uh, from shooting positions and some physical tasks that need to be done because if you don't pay attention to the stage brief and you don't execute the stage properly, you can walk away with a zero. The third thing that's important at the Mammoth Sniper Challenge is time management. My partner, Scott Whitehead, and I have started running a, a wrist timer for all the stages. The stages are typically four to eight minutes, and you need to know when it starts, you need to know when it ends, and you need to use all of that time to score points. The fourth point uh, to shooting stages at the Mammoth Sniper Challenge is maximizing your score. It's a team event and you compete against other teams and at the end of the event you're ranked by shooting score. Some stages uh, are set up in a way that the primary shooter can score more points than the secondary. Some stages are set up uh, in a way that the secondary shooter can uh, score more than the primary. Sometimes it's smart to divide the time in half. Sometimes it's smart to take this amount of time and divide it uh, differently between the teammates. Uh, so that you can walk away from the stage with maximum points. And the fifth thing, the most important thing about shooting stages at the Mammoth Sniper Challenge is to have a plan and then be ready for your plan to go awry. <laughs> we, uh, we joke a lot about a quote from Mike Tyson that uh, he said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face and the Mammoth Sniper Challenge will punch you in the face uh, every stage. Uh, they'll do the stage briefing and you'll see all the targets You'll make a plan for how you're going to execute the stage, you'll get in the shooting position, and you won't be able to see three of the targets from the shooting position that you plan to shoot. And some of the targets that you plan to skip will be in plain view. Um, some of the shooting positions appear to be stable and easy to get into, and when you get into them, you realize you can't get the shot or the position that you wanted. So uh, even though your gear works well, even though you understand the stage brief, even though you have a plan and you manage your time well, you can step into the stage and it can go uh, completely awry right away. So you have to have a plan and you have to have uh, the ability to adapt uh, to complete the stages and score the maximum points. You have to have a rifle capable of shooting out to a thousand yards. Uh, you have to have several magazines, uh, 14 to 20 round magazines because they're long stages. Uh, you'll need a Kestrel, laser rangefinder, uh, a way to spot, whether it's binoculars or spotting scope and tripod, everyone kind of does that differently. Uh, arm board, notepad, pen, timer, uh, rear bag, sling, and that pretty much gets you the minimum requirement to get through all the stages. The stage briefs at Mammoth are very detailed, are read by the RO, and then you have five minutes to ask questions about what's expected of you in the stage. But there are details in the stage brief um, relating to the shooting positions, the movement between the shooting positions, the order that the shooters can shoot, sometimes the order that the targets can be or have to be engaged, and uh, there are usually some physical elements in the stages. Uh, having to move sandbags from position A to position B before you can engage targets or having to climb in and out of positions in a certain order. And if you don't pick up on those details and follow some of those instructions in exactly the correct order, the scorer will not score your hits. And that's really, really aggravating when you're shooting and you know that you're hitting, 
but the scorer doesn't call out a score because you have done some order of operations incorrectly. The stages are typically four to eight minute stages. You need to know when the stage starts and you need to know what is required to be complete by the end of the stage. And it's been interesting for us over the years, we have learned to manage our time better and better. We both run a countdown timer on our wrist next to our arm board so that we know how much time is available and we can adjust our plan as it goes. A lot of people come to Mammoth for the first time that have shot PRS events or prone matches and when you start getting up, laying down, moving to a position, reloading, moving to a different target, it's very easy to lose track of time. And we've seen a lot of times uh, teams will get a zero score on a stage because they're concentrating so hard on the shooting, they lose track of time and where they need to be when time expires. So uh, time management, a way to track the time, and a way to keep your partner aware of the time, uh, both important to completing the stages. A lot of people have asked us about plans for stages or how to game stages and the expression gaming stages uh, kind of has a negative connotation but you have to game the stages to maximize your points. Uh, some uh, stages have more uh, targets for the primary shooter and some stages have higher point value targets for the secondary shooter. So the first thing you have to do after the stage briefing is get with your teammate and make a plan for we're going to spend this much time for you shooting these primary targets. It's going to take us 30 seconds to change positions. Then we're going to spend this much time uh, for the secondary shooter to shoot his targets. The goal at the end of the stage is to have the maximum amount of points. And every team approaches that differently. One example of stage planning or gaming uh, came into play last year at the 2017 Mammoth Sniper Challenge. There was a stage that required uh, some climbing under barbed wire and over obstacles to the primary position where Scott had to shoot off of a rope swing at a variety of targets and then movement to a second position where the secondary shooter had to shoot off a wooden spool at much larger, closer targets. We had kind of made a plan for dividing our time, what Scott was going to shoot, what I was going to shoot, uh, to come away with that with maximum points. And when Scott got in position on the swing, fired two or three rounds and missed everything he shot at, we had to change the plan right away and Scott literally bailed out. He said, I'm out. I can't shoot from here. You're up. <laughs> and I moved into my secondary position uh, sooner than expected, but was able to clean all the secondary targets rather than just the three or four that we had planned on shooting at uh, and optimized our score for the stage. Uh, this year, just a couple weeks ago, at the uh, arena training facility. Uh, might have been the last stage on Saturday, the A-frame and platform stage, required us to carry sandbags up and over an A-frame, get all our gear up onto a platform and A-frame. The primary shooter had to shoot from the A-frame, secondary shooter had to shoot a modified prone off a platform. Uh, Scott has shot really well off uh, A-frame uh, at the Purgatory Sniper Challenge and last year at Mammoth. So we expected him to get in a position, score a lot of points, and then I would kind of follow up uh, modified prone from the platform. Uh, so we did, we carried the sandbags over the A-frame, that went well, got our gear in position, Scott climbed up the A-frame, I arranged targets for him, and he struggled to get in position. And he struggled, and he struggled, and he struggled. It was not an A-frame position that he had shot from before. And as I was ranging targets, I saw out of the corner of my eye the magazine fall out of his bottom pedal. One of the rules of the stage was if you dropped any gear, you could not retrieve it. So he had a spare magazine, which is part of planning and having a plan, reloaded his second magazine, took a few more shots, and eventually he said, this isn't stable, go. I was able to look at my timer, see how much time we had left. Scott ranged targets for me, and I think I scored four hits before time expired. And I think we had our squad high score on that stage after getting in a position that we expected to be solid and wasn't, dropping a magazine, reloading a spare, and shooting more targets from the secondary position than we expected. So the Mammoth Sniper Challenge is an event that Scott and I first did in 2014, and we've done five in a row. We were intimidated when we signed up for it initially, and we thought we were prepared. And every year since then, we've thought we've been prepared. But the best thing about the Mammoth Sniper Challenge, and the reason I would encourage anyone to try it, is that every time you go, the challenge is different. 
every time you go, you prepare based on your experiences and what you've learned from other people. Every time you go, you learn something new that you thought you had prepared for and didn't. Uh, and if you do well, every year you go, you improve your finishing position. Scott and I have finished uh, third in open division, and we tied for third in regular division last year. This year we signed up for the tough man division and failed one of the first rooks. We shot well all weekend and we're happy with our score, but we'll be back next year better prepared uh, to finish well in tough man. And hopefully we'll see you there.